so then uh, you want to get the wires to the right length, dike them off. This set of black and red power wires, I dike off right, even with that joint right there, in the, or that piece right there in the side frame. Just get them both the exact same length. They go like that. These motor wires I'd like them off just even with the gold connectors there and then when you put the connector on it it'll give you a little slack in that wire. Okay, you want to strip those back. Now the motor comes with its connectors uh, that go on the three motor leads. And we supply an electrical wiring kit, the dagger pins. These are some battery connectors. So this all has to be soldered up. The dagger pins go on the power leads and the motor connect. Now I like to twist these motor leads and these power connectors as tight as I can just to make it easier for them to slide inside of these little dagger pins. Same thing with the motor leads, I'll just twist them up to make them fit better. You can buy uh, flux. It makes, uh, it seems to make things flow a little better. If you just add a little flux and not count on the flux that's inside the rosin core solder. So I go through and I'll tin my wires first. You know you've gotten the wire hot enough when the solder soaks into the sucks into the wire. It's properly tinned.
I'll spin that wire a little bit to make sure I get it properly tinned all the way around. So I like to use a pair of forceps to get a good grip on this uh, little dagger pin. I get it tinned. I get some solder. side of it you just want to make sure you get enough heat on this joint that it actually melts this the tinning on the wire take your time you don't want a cold solder joint Sometimes you need just a little dab of solder to make act as a heat sink. But you want to try to melt that solder directly with your dagger pin. Make sure you get enough heat on the joint that you are melting that solder on the wire and you don't have a cold joint. Now if I get a little excess solder there, I'll, I'll just take a, a file or a set of dikes and trim that off, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. The motor connectors are a little bit easier because they're a little bit bigger. They're not quite as tight a fit, but it's basically the same process. I got a little bit of solder on my tip to act like a heat sink. I heat up the metal part and melt the solder directly with the Slide that together and then I'll make sure I apply enough heat to where I melt the solder on the wire. These have little holes and it's, it's the best place to apply heat is right at that little hole. Apply enough heat, it'll wick in and it'll suck that solder off the tip of your soldering iron that you're using as a heat sink. 
So you have to kind of reapply that. Give it plenty of time to heat up. Then if you have some excess solder on the sides, like this red one here, I ended up with a bunch. I put too much in the uh, side of the connector. I'll just clean that up. These all look good. Got it hot enough that solder just sucks. So when you get those all soldered on and slide on the heat shrink, I put those heat shrinks flush with the into the connectors. And these heat shrinks you get for The power connectors are a little bit small and you can just take a pair of needle nose pliers and slip them inside and just give it a little stretch and that makes it a lot easier to get those heat shrinks on. I'll just shrink that up and that'll be the end of the speed control installation.